Hello guys, welcome to the new video lesson on signatures text. In the previous video lesson, we have seen the autobiographical details of Nellie Wong, the Chinese American poet, the revolutionary lady poet, female poetess, who was a pioneer in the writing collective Unbound Feet and who always stood for the predicament of Asian American women and who was also a leading political figure who fuses a stark historical landscape with a deep passion for life that emerges from generations of cultural wisdom and generations of suffering. So gradually we shall move on to the poem when I was growing up. Now this video lesson deals mainly with the summary and critical analysis of the poem. When I was growing up by Nelly Bon. Of course, it's an autobiographical poem where the poet brings out, expresses the predicament, the plight, the obstacles and hardships faced by Asian American immigrants, Chinese American immigrants, and all those uh, people who have migrated towards America, the US, and who are forced or by many other reasons, several factors leading to their working, living, and mingling and residing in the U.S. So all those obstacles and the identity crisis and emotional conflicts faced by all these people are found wind or expressed, uh, delineated in Nelly Wong's poem. And we have seen how she stood for the feminism where she talks about the socialist feminism, which seems to be uh, be the key factor or the key, the only resolution to a better world and uh, her verdict and her ideology behind the conditions and the situations of women, especially uh, her maxim that when women arise, everyone will rise. So the poem uh, is full of rhetorical questions, imagery and repetition. Let us move on to the first stanza of the poem. When I was growing up by Nelly Wong. I know now that once I longed to be white. How? You ask. Let me tell you the ways. When I was growing up, people told me I was dark. And I believed my own darkness in the mirror, in my soul, my own narrow vision. Of course, you can see how the I is the personal, the persona, the uh, first person speaker, the poet herself being a young girl, always confused, sad, depressed and dejected. She is sharing her wish that she longed to be a white person. You know, of course, she is a Chinese. She is an American born Chinese poetess or lady or woman. And she, as a young girl, always yearned or pined to be identify herself with the country, the foster mother country in which she is living. And she is telling you, you just ask me, how? How can I be uh, white? Let me tell you the way. So I was dreaming. I was just, uh, what do you say, musing on myself. I was just trying to contemplate. But I was growing up, so I'm telling you the ways in which I wished to be white and I'm telling you the reasons why I wished to be white. When I was growing up, uh, people around me, they told me that I was dark because uh, an Asian or a Chinese who is growing or who is, if you place yourself in a European white culture or white people environment or circle you will feel that you are uh, you strongly realize or identify yourself as a colored person or a black person or a non-white person because the people around you the environment the scenario in which you are staying or you're locating uh, yourself is white and i also believed my own darkness in the mirror so it's not just people's uh, suggestions or people's opinion that I was, uh, I was dark. But then I could see, I could visualize and understand, comprehend very clearly. It is apparently I am dark. I can see that from the reflection. The mirror also tells me the stark reality that 
the mirror also uh, provides me or furnishes me with the, the narrow vision. So one thing is sure that the poet realizes now that it was a narrow vision. It was a very restricted, limited view of herself that I was dark, that she was dark. And then she realized that she herself was dark. When I was growing up, people told me I was dark and I believed my own darkness in the mirror, in my soul, my own narrow vision. When I was growing up, my sisters with fair skin got praised for their beauty and I fell further, crushed between high balls. When I was growing up, I read magazines and saw movies, blonde movie stars white skin, sensuous lips, and to be elevated, to become a woman, a desirable woman, I began to wear imaginary pale skin. So, please know that the title of the poem when I was growing up, uh, this refrain, this is being repeated. This is a refrain which is repeated throughout the whole poem when I was growing up. It points out the cause of the journey, the, uh, the time period, the duration, or the growing process of the poet. And we shall discuss about the title significance at the end of the lesson. Okay. Now you can um, realize, you can notice that when I was growing up is a refrain, which is, which it's a phrase of that line is being repeated on and on. So when I was growing up, my sisters with fair skin got praised for their beauty. So who are those sisters? My friends, my people, or those girls or my friends who are around me. And they were praised for their fair skin. And in her home too, her sisters, her siblings, they had fair skin. Their skin was white and people or the society around me, or even my family members, they praised them for being white, but not me. And I fell further, crushed between high walls. So again, so here, sisters do mean the girls community, the community, the fraternity of girls, in which the poet persona is growing up, learning, going to school, playing, and growing up. So. Uh, I feel that I'm crushed. My mind, my soul, my attitude, my inclinations, my feelings, my thoughts, my ideas, everything is crushed, shattered between high walls. It's as if I'm trapped between high walls. And when I was growing up, I read magazines. So now she is growing up, she's attending schools, she is enlightened and she's getting educated. And then she started reading magazines. And in magazines, the social media or the uh, the world which opens up, the the world which opened up before her through books. What did they? What impression did they create in this young girl who always pined, and yearned, and wished to become a white? I saw movies. Yes, I could see. So the the media, the film world, the cinema. All these things, here, of course, we all do grow up and these are the different stages of growth and we are habits, our, our likes, our interests, our feelings, our emotions do change. They grow and they change simultaneously as we grow in physique and mind. There are a lot of emotional confusions and conflicts and crises within us a lot of biological a lot of emotional changes take place within and with the uh, I mean, within us and outside us so she uh, she could see when she uh, saw movie stars blonde with red hairs with white skin so beautiful and their sensuous lips so and and to be elevated so to become a woman a desirable woman, I began to wear imaginary pale skin. 
The persona, the speaker, the little girl in the poem, she often looks at her skin and she feels she despised, she detested and she hates her own skin, which is yellow, which is uh, not white, which is dark and which is colored. She always wanted to be white. And even the books, the magazines, the film world, the movies and all those uh, culture the cultural background or the cultural environment in which she is living, it uh, penetrates, it invigorates and tries to fill up her mind and her soul, everything with new notions and new ideas that if you want to become a real woman, if you want to become an original lady, if you have to become a desirable, desirable in the sense, a very elegant, charming, beautiful, appealing lady, you have to be white. You need to have blonde hair. You need to have white skin. And you need to have beautiful, sensuous lips. Uh, what do you say? Uh, painted with lipsticks and makeups and cosmetics, etc. So, beauty is synonymous with the physical uh, appearance here. Now, so... What did she do then? Once she realized this truth, once she realized this fact, she started hallucinating. She started imagining that she herself had a pale skin. Her skin is not colored. It, is not, it has never been dark. It is pale. It is light. It is white. So she started uh, pretending that she had white skin or paler skin. And that was her imagination. We should understand that that was her childish girlish whim and fancy when i was growing up i was proud of my english my grammar my spelling fitting into the group of smart children smart chinese uh, uh, children fitting in belonging getting in line so here now she moves on from the media from the magazines from books and films and pop culture, all these things, uh, she moves on towards schooling, school, education, academics, etc. Now, I was proud of my English. Why? She identifies, she always wanted to be a European. She wants to be a white girl, a white woman, a white lady or a white person, you know. So their language is, of course, English. So she really uh, did well at school and she really did well in class. And in her academics, she was a bright student. So I was really proud of my English. I was proud of my language. I was proud of my spellings and grammars and all those things. So academically, she was bright. And she started fitting and she was uh, trying to squeeze in into the, the strata of smart children. So she was a bright student. Smart Chinese children fitting in, belonging, getting in line. What line? The European line, the white line, the, what do you say, the, the, the mainstream people, of course. The US, the American society, the mainstream is always the white, the Europeans, the, the Americans. So, of course, young, smart Chinese girls, they worked well. They did well in their academics and they were really bright. And this way, they tried to get a name. They tried to be noticed uh, in the um, academia so that she was able to do that because uh, she tried to fit in. She was trying to make some space for her among the smart Chinese children. When I was, so when I was growing up and went to high school, now she is growing more and more. She is getting bigger. I mean... Uh, she is now a teenage girl, of course, now not, no more a young girl. I discovered the rich white girls, yes. Now they are college girls, okay, and a few yellow girls. So there were so many rich white girls and a minority of yellow girls. Their imported cotton dresses, their cashmere sweaters, their curly hair. And I thought that I too should have what these lucky girls have. So, yes, uh, she was growing up. The next stage after school, they went to high school. They were college girls. Now they started identifying each other. She understood that the rich white girls, they always had beautiful imported expensive cotton dresses. And they had beautiful and charming sweaters for 
the winters, and their hair was curly, whereas her was straight. And I thought that I should have what these lucky girls had. So, being white, being sensuous, having blonde hair, having a white skin, and being rich, possessing beautiful cotton dresses, having a lot of cashmere sweaters, and having beautiful curly hair. For her, for the speaker of the poem, for Nelly Wong as a young girl, she felt that these girls who had all these things, they were really fortunate. They were lucky. So to be lucky, you need to possess all these things. These were treasures which made you uh, happy, rich, and uh, perfect, and lucky too. Yes. When I was growing up, I hungered for American food. So she's moving from the dress habits, the makeups and the curly hairs and education and school and colleges and fabrics and costumes and all moving slowly and slowly. Gradually, she is now talking about eating habits of food. I hungered for American food, American styles coded, white and even to me, a child born of Chinese parents, being Chinese, was feeling foreign, was limiting, was un-American. With so much desperateness, the speaker shares her agony, her woes and worries with us. I was growing up. I, I don't stop growing. But then I wished, I yearned for American food. So as a young girl, as a grown-up girl, I started, uh, I changed, I switched on to different fooding habits. I started having or relishing American food. I started uh, adopting American styles in everything, in my dressing, in my hairstyle, my face makeup, my accessories, the things I use, the things I read, I watch, I listen to everything that is uh, pertaining to American culture. Why? To make myself white and to identify myself as American. White and even to me, a child born of Chinese parents. Uh, being Chinese was feeling foreign. This is really exasperating. This is really disgusting, you know. Uh, living, learning English, living in an English society, uh, living in an American society, to, in this contemporary society, I am a child born to Chinese parents. And it is really intimidating to be a Chinese in the American society. Why? It makes you feel foreign. You're a stranger here. You're a totally stranger here. It was limiting. It's a flaw. It's an error that you are Chinese. It's an error. It's a mistake that you are an Asian in America. Because uh, being Chinese, being our, or having a, a colored skin, having a dark skin, having a dull skin, Having uh, no white skin means you're un-American. That means you're not perfect. You are not a human being even. So to be, a, what do you say, a respectable person, to be a complete person, to be a desirable person, to become a woman, to become a female, I must somehow become white. And that's what I'm yearning for desperately. When I was growing up and a white man wanted to take me out, she's now talking about dating and falling in love or romance. I thought I was spe special, an exotic gardener, uh, anxious to fit the stereotype of an oriental chick. Yes, uh, using a lot of uh, uh, colloquial words and conversation style, the speaker, Nelly Wong, is chatting with the readers, you feel that. What is gardenia? It's a shrub of warm climates with large, fragrant, white or yellow flowers. It's chosen for wedding bouquets and they are associated with purity and love. So when a white man, uh, there was an occasion, there was a very fortunate, very exciting moment when a white man invited me to on a date. He invited me, he called me, out for a date and uh, I thought I was special and exotic gardenia and what is exotic means strange it's unique and foreign unusual and exciting because in this country or in this uh, uh, 
what do you say uh, in American uh, in America a white man calling or inviting a Chinese uh, girl to date or to go out or to dine with him it's really unusual it's quite unnatural and this is uh, what bringing a lot of butterflies in my bellies you know I'm really excited and I really feel that I'm special I'm just like a gardenia I'm just a beautiful and charming garden full of beautiful flowers and these flowers are associated or synonymous with purity and love you know I'm really pure I'm really special and I'm unusual that he invited me to dine out or he invited me to go out with him on a date so that's what I felt really and I was really anxious you know to fit to the stereotype of an oriental chick oriental means asian it is uh, it is actually a derogatory word it's an offensive word by asians you mean uh, as offensive by asians especially by asian americans so calling you oriental orientalism of course in post colonial studies the word orientalism uh, is a coined uh, in order to it was coined by a word say then was a uh, really wonderful a phenomenal work by edward said which is called orientalism and orientalism actually is an offensive word it's a derogatory word which is used to refer to anything non white means we all belong to the orientals so asian american asian uh, people they consider it as an offensive word it was a disgraceful term using it and uh, oriental chick means it's an asian female a girl with asian proportions of beauty so i was anxious to fit the stereotype of an oriental chick so in this particular circumstances a white man calling me out i really felt special unique and exciting you know yes when i was growing up i felt ashamed of some yellow men they are small bones they are frail bodies they are spitting on the streets they are coughing they are lying in sunless rooms shooting themselves in the arms so now she is talking about her attitude and her views uh related to the chinese men there were a minority of chinese men there in america and when i was growing up i really felt ashamed it was insulting to see uh yellow men that is men of chinese boys and men of chinese origin they are here they are very short they have uh, small bones they are not tall like the americans they are not uh, sturdy they are not robust and they are not uh, tall and stout like the american men and boys so they have very frail delicate and tender skin and bodies then they are spitting on the streets they have it their etiquettes are really uh, boring and they are really disgusting and despicable and they are coughing they are lying in sunless rooms shooting themselves in the arm so i really felt bad about all these things i really feel uh, disgusting and it is really disgraceful to see our own men that is chinese men la, uh, having or indulging they they are never good to look they they don't have any masculinity and they are very tender creatures delicate things they are coughing they are lying in the sunless rooms and they are shooting themselves in the arms so uh, she feels uh, she looks down upon chinese men and boys who are not at all appealing and attractive when compared to american boys and men when i was growing up people would ask if i were filipino polynesian uh, portuguese they named all colors except white the shell of my soul but not my rough dark skin so it's a beautiful line the shell of my soul but not my rough dark skin so it's very plainly uh conversed to us what is she saying when i was growing up people they used to identify they used to mistake uh me for a filipino or polynesian in thousand islands you know the indigenous people who inhabit the islands polynesia it's a, a group of thousand islands which was lying in a large portion of a mid and southern pacific ocean so 
she is saying that uh, they take me for a Polynesian, they take me for a Portuguese, sometimes they take me for as an inhabitant of the Philippines, but never a white. So that's really, uh, what do you say, uh, saddening. And she is realizing, she is gulping the agony and she is gulping or she is uh, uh, accepting this pain. So they don't, they don't uh, mistake, ne uh, they don't never mistake me for a white European, the shell of my soul, but not my rough, dark skin. They are naming all colors. They are calling me as Portuguese. They're calling me a Polynesian. They are asking me if I'm a, a Filipino, but never white. So the shell of my soul. They are, what are, what are, they, 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 they don't look at or they don't care for. They are never concerned or bothered with my soul. They are, they are naming just my rough, dark skin. They are looking at this and then they are naming all these things. The shell of my soul is white. My mind is pure. My mind is uh, pure. My mind is innocence and I possess all kinds of virtues in me. But nobody does ever peep or glance, take a glance at my soul my heart and my mind they are just looking at the superficiality of my physique they are looking at my physiological factors and features and they just call me names as filipino polynesian portuguese any anything except white so i wished to be white and for me my mind or my soul is white as pure and as innocent and as virtuous as it is when I was growing up, I felt dirty, of course. My skin is never white, so I thought I was dirty. So this is a very childish, crazy idea that she harbors in her mind. I thought that God made white people clean. And no matter how much I bathed and bathed, I couldn't change. I could not shed my skin in the gray waters. This, is, uh, this shows how much she... Uh, how much desperately she wanted to be a wife. She thought that just like we also uh, fool uh, baby babies or young children, yeah, telling them that, yeah, uh, sometimes we do that. We tease them, we taunt them, isn't it? Likewise, she also really felt, or somebody might have put this notion in her mind that uh, she is black, she is never white simply because she is dirty. There is uh, dirt on her body and she tries to clean her body she used to bathe and bathe with soap and water but in vain it all those attempts to all those attempts to uh, clean herself and to become uh, and to make her skin paler and whiter and uh, to be a white person all those attempts were futile and they were uh, they were failed she failed in all her attempts because it was her skin. She was a Chinese. She was an Asian. She was born with it. It's never. She, it, it doesn't. It is not that she was dirty. Her skin was colored and it was uh, yellow. Doesn't mean that or is not because that she is dirty, as she really believed or she felt so. So I bathed a lot and I thought that white people, uh, they were clean and pure and. What do you say? Tidy and they were perfect and they were beautiful. They were beautified by God. They were cleaned and cleansed by God. But uh, feeling uh, or under such doubts and confusions, she also started cleaning herself so that uh, with the hope or with the uh, belief that she would also, after cleaning and bathing a lot, uh, cleansing her skin, she would become white. But that also failed. When I was growing up, I swore I would run away to purple mountains, the houses by the sea with nothing over my head, with space to breathe. And uh, uh, I'm congested with yellow people in an area called Chinatown, in an area I later learned was a ghetto, one of many hearts of Asian America. So... We are moving towards the conclusion of the poem. And here, uh, Nelly Vaughan is talking about 
how she used to run away. She used to run here and there as a young girl. She would run away to Purple Mountains. They, 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 she's referring to the Chinatown, which is a place in uh, outside China where many Chinese people live and there are lots of uh, Chinese uh, restaurants and shops. So she would run away to Purple Mountains houses by the sea with nothing over my head, leaving her head open without covering her head and hair. And she wished for a space to breathe. Why? Because she herself has uh, desperately tried to hide herself in a cocoon, uh, in a shell. She has hidden herself. Now she feels shocked. She feels uh, suffocated and she wants space to breathe. So I'm congested with yellow people uh, in the in an area called Chinatown. So Chinatown, you have a reference here where it is an area of a city. It's a city outside China where many Chinese people are living. So in an area I later learned was a gato, one of many hearts of Asian Americans. So she thought that she would be more free and she would be uh, independent when she moved towards or she ran about that is uh, she, she she felt that uh, the the speaker the poet the poet persona she felt that if she ran across here and there randomly and if she moved towards the purple mountains where there is a people where there is a place called chinatown which is often called chinatown there she could see uh, there she could sp uh, she could get more space to breathe there she could feel free there she could regain her individuality and her consciousness where she could attain her self dumb etc she felt that she believed that but then later on when she grew up she felt that it was not actually a place uh, in china it was one it was a ghetto where which where a lot of asian americans lived Okay, she mistook it for a Chinatown. Chinatown was actually an area of a city outside China where Chinese people lived and lots of uh, uh, Chinese culture were there, Chinese shops, Chinese restaurants and Chinese people, Chinese houses, all these were there. So she felt that when I would run away to Purple Mountains as a young girl growing up means this is also another, I swore, it is her... Uh, what do you say? Uh, I, I, I promise she's swearing and she's promising that it is better to run away to this purple mountains, houses by the sea, uh, the beachside, houses which are located or situated near the sea at the beaches with my head uncovered so that I could breathe freely. I could be uh, on at my own ease. I would feel better uncongested with yellow people in an area called Chinatown. In an area I later learned was a gato, one of many hearts of Asian Americans. She wanted to release her soul. She wanted to free her mind from all these intimidating and desperating and depressing thoughts and this confusions and this identity crisis and emotional conflicts. So that is what she is saying. Uh, I would like to go to this purple mountains and breathe and feel free uh, with uh, space to breathe, uncongested with yellow people in an area. So she doesn't want uh, congestion means uh, rush and crowding, uh, which makes you feel suffocated and breathless. You know? So that's what she talks about when all these yellow men and yellow people, just like in Chinatown, they uh, all are congested and all are uh, 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 all are crowding there and a lot of rush and a lot of crowds is there. You, you don't have any space there. So just like that, she feels to uh, breathe and she feels to be on her own and she doesn't want to be congested, that is uncongested with yellow people. And that area later on, I learned, I realized that was a ghetto, one of many hearts of Asian America. Now, this is the concluding stanza of uh, Nelly Wong's poem when I was growing up. I know now that once I long to be white, how many more ways you ask, haven't I told you enough? 
So I have told you so many ways in which I wished for, I pined for to uh, become a white, uh, become a European. And now I realize that it was a foolish notion. It was a foolish women fancy that to long to wish and to yearn to be a white. So you can ask me for many more ways, but I don't. So this transition, that's what she told by running off to the purple mountains. We can go back to the uh, previous uh, paragraph where she, uh, the stanza where she talks about her transition that she reconciles and she admits, she accepts the ethnic identity. That is it. Uh, I, I swear, I promise that now as a grown-up person, now I realize that this was a really foolish notion. So it is better for me. I would believe, uh, I believe that I would run away from this place to the Purple Mountains and my old own place, Chinatown. So with nothing over my head so that I can, that is she is accepting or she is reconciling to the truth, to the fact that she is indeed a Chinese person and she is actually accepting her ethnic identity. So the whole thing uh, is coming. There is a transition. There is a shift from a foolish young girl who wishes to uh, be a white and European. Later on, she shifts to a self-realized, self-redeemed Chinese American poetess or woman. And now she... Uh, she is actually, she realizes that she is uh, part of an ethnic group, forming a part of one of more uh, political nations. And uh, they, uh, they are, in fact, a group of people who share a common ethnic identity, language, culture, descent, and history. So uh, as the title, the title, ex uh, the title actually, uh, when I was growing up, it's actually a refrain, which is repeated on and on throughout the poem. And you can see uh, how she realizes or she how she pours out, she expresses and shares her mental, physical um, conflicts and issues, the identity crisis and the existential conflicts and the autobiographical elements, which is uh, which the poem is teeming and filled with a lot of autobiographical elements and existential conflicts at the end. Uh, she uh, So she talks about her infancy as a young girl and then she talks about her teenage uh, stage of life and then she talks about her adulthood and she talks a lot about the physique and the biological features and then um, what do you say? Yes, all these are the uh, significance, all these are the title significance of the poem. In fact, it is a stark uh, it is a the truth. The self-realization dawns upon the poem persona, and she uh, uh, you can see that she is. There is a series of uh, shifts, and she uh, ultimately there is a transition of the poet, and she realizes or discovers her uh, ethnic identity. She realizes that she has to dismantle and she has to break all these stereotypical notions of uh, beauty concepts and this beauty cult that it is not the physique that people uh, value or people should value or must value. The real beauty is in fact lies in the uh, confidence, the mental attitude, your temperaments and your identity which should uh, assert your personality and your real beauty so the real beauty lies within us in accepting whom we are so it is the poem the title of the poem it tells you how the foolish young girl uh, the foolish young Nelly Vong she grows up grows up in the sense not simply growing up becoming bigger or physically growing up it shows that her foolish ideas her foolish notions her uh, immature conflicts and her existential crisis, all these things were resolved and ultimately she was really grown up in her temperament, her attitude, her individuality and identity. So that is all about the uh, poem and thank you for watching.